Alright everybody, my name is Adam Reeples Box, and today's video is a bit of an offbeat one as it's kind of a preview if you want to see more content and just a quick look at some new software features. Adobe recently released the new Creative Cloud update for Creative Cloud 2015. If you're unaware, it started out with just Creative Cloud, and then they did CC 2014, and they've just pushed out, halfway through the year, CC 2015. And we'll get to all that in the rest of the video after we touch on this video's sponsor. This video is made possible thanks to lynda.com. lynda.com makes it easy to pick up new skills, grow your hobbies, or learn to use new software through their in-depth and easy-to-follow video tutorials and courses. I try to post tutorials as often as I can, but you can't beat the extensive coverage on lynda.com. I still go through lynda courses on the regular to learn new things. You can get a special 10-day free trial by clicking the screen now or going to epostvox.com slash lynda to learn more. Now, for the most part, these, these updates don't make a whole lot of changes, but CC 2015 has actually made some interesting changes to Premiere Pro specifically. So immediately you're going to notice when you open up Premiere Pro that the welcome screen is drastically different. It used to just be a little text box where you could choose your project settings and things like that. Now you get an entire old school like Premiere Elements welcome menu where you can look at new features, you can look at videos, getting started tutorials, tick tips and technique tutorials, or you can just set up your project settings. And then you can of course sync your Creative Cloud stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up a sample project that I was already working on to experiment with some of the new features, but you can make a new one, convert an old one, etc. I'm going to go ahead and open up one I was working on. Now when you upgrade from CC 2014 to CC 2015, it does claim to bring over your previous settings such as your presets and your workspaces and things like that. For me it did not. It brought over uh, my effects and transitions that were installed for CC 2014, but it didn't bring over any of, my, any of my workflow things or anything like that. So you may notice that affected you as well. But in part, as far as the workspace kind of things go, that's actually going to be because they've actually totally changed the workflow defaults, at least, for Premiere Pro. And I actually really like it. So I'm just going to hit the main points here, and then if you want to see more specific tutorials, we can go from there. But you're going to notice at the top here, Instead of having your own, I mean, you can set up your own workspaces and things like that, but it already has pre-configured workflow or workspaces for each stage of your workflow. So you start out in this assembly tab, which is where you import your projects, you make new sequences, things like that, and even start putting stuff on a timeline. Then you flip over here to editing, and it changes the view. You have the effects controls default over here, you have the audio mixer, and then you have your main program preview here. And then down at the bottom, you have your main timeline and your your media files and sequences. So this is where you're going to do most of your editing, chop up things, do stuff like that. You can throw on your effects if you want here and just kind of make your basic video together. And then they have what's really cool, a color tab. This is specifically just its own section for setting up color correction, which is really, really neat. And it's powered by Lumetri Color and Lumetri Looks, I want to say it's called. But the Lumetri color plug plugins, uh, which, which come with it, you don't have to install separate plugins. And so all you have to do is select your clip on the timeline, and I'm actually, if I go back here, if I start with this sequence and then go over to color, that's what's going to be open in the color tab. And then you can start, you have all these different sections with which to edit your color, and you can check and uncheck which ones you want. So you have basic correction, which is going to use Lumetri settings. So if I'm going to select this, then I can set, select default camera profiles from some of the bigger cameras. Mine is not in there because it's a lower end DSLR. You can adjust white balance and color temperature and things like that. You can set exposure, contrast, all of your basic camera raw settings you can actually apply here. I've set that back to normalish. Uh, you can you can actually use presets if you right click up here. You can save presets and load them from there. Then you can go to creative and that's where you can apply specific looks from the Lumetri looks and you can import custom ones that weren't necessarily made with this version of Premiere and just kind of apply whatever you want. So let's get uh, Noir Nouvelle, which is basically going to be black and white, I guess. Actually, yeah, and then crank up the intensity and with that intensity slider it's how much gets applied. So if you don't want the full effect, like that just kind of desaturates my video a little bit. 
or I can pump it up all the way and get some crazy effect. And then you have your adjustments section, which is going to adjust parts of that look. If we minimize creative, we can go to curves. This is where you're going to manage your RGB curves and your hue, saturation, color. And if you go to color wheels, that's where you adjust your midtone shadows and highlights for your color balance. And then you can add a vignette, a, vin, a vignette. I always say that wrong, a vignette. You can either add a black one or a white one and do custom things like that. Instead of having to do all sorts of crazy effects or overlays for a vignette, you can do it in this color tab, which is really, really neat. And then you go over to the effects tab at the top here, and this is where you can apply specific effects. If you don't want to do it in your normal editing, you can apply specific effects over here, and it's got it set up with an optimized workflow where you have your effects controls right in the middle, your effects lists on the left, works out pretty well. Then you move over to the audio tab, and this is where you can mix and master your audio, add audio effects, things like that. And then over on these arrows, I don't know why they're in a separate section, but there's meta logging where you can add metadata to your clips and to your sequences and things like that. My only main issue with this new workflow is that there's no final section for rendering or exporting your video for some reason. Now, if you select your sequence over here, not your clip, you gotta make sure you're selecting a sequence, not a clip, you can go to File, Export Media, or hit Control M, and it should work fine. But being used to doing it from the timeline makes this feel a little strange. It should still work fine as, you, as long as you have the right thing selected. It just seems silly if they're going to set up this whole workflow that they don't have a new, wor a new workspace for uh, rendering and exporting. That would be really neat and a good final step for this. But they don't have that at the moment. But this is what they have overall that they've added to Premiere Pro CC. And like I said, I really like it. And I love the color editing workspace. I'm awful at the moment with trying to learn Lumetri. But I I finally set my DSLR to be a neutral pro profile. And I really want to get into making my own kind of look for videos that I apply to just all the most of the videos I make using Lumetri. And just running with a flat profile on my DSLR. And so having all this set up like this is just great. So let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And if you want to see specific tutorials for editing or software in general, be sure to leave those in the comment section down below. Otherwise, guys, thank you so very much for watching. My name has been Adam Repos Vox. Be sure to click links in the description below for other channels and our social media pages and our Patreon campaign, things like that. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye all right so if you want to make a video thumbnail first you're going to need a video up on youtube and then if you want to use any specific assets such as this transparent head that i use for my avatars or you or if you want to use text go ahead and gather those assets or think about what text you would want to use next you want to pick your video and